In chapter four, we're going to talk about a familiar topic to you, familiar from calculus, differentiation. Section 4.1 is just defining the derivative. And before we jump into a definition, let's remind ourselves graphically what a derivative is. We normally think of the derivative of a function at a particular x value to be the slope of the tangent line um, on the graph at that x value. So let's say that x naught is the point in question that we're trying to look at the derivative. And x is just some other arbitrary point out there. Well, if I were to connect the two at the two function values at x naught and x, that basically gave me a horizontal line. Um, this line going through at two points is called a secant line. But notice what happens as I get x closer. Let's move this x. Let's get rid of him and put, this, put it here now. So I'll just kind of cross him out. And connect this to get another secant line. Notice that we're approaching the, the line that is tangent to the graph at x naught. And if we let the distance between x naught and x approach zero, if that limit exists um, of basically the slope between the two points as x gets closer and closer, we'll end up with a tangent line that looks like this. And the slope of this tangent line at this point um, would give you the derivative of the function at that point x naught. Okay, that should look fairly familiar. Now let's look at the more formal definition. First definition in 4.1. F is a function from domain D into R, and x naught is some arbitrary point in D that is also an accumulation point, so it can't be an isolated point. For example, if the function looks like something like, something like this, <clears throat> this is an isolated point in the domain. Say the domain goes from there and that point. The function is not differentiable here. That is not, we can't even try it because it's not an accumulation point. This is an isolated point. All of the points in this closed interval are accumulation points. Okay, so we've established now that x naught is in the domain and it's an accumulation point of the domain. For every x in the domain different from x naught, let this function t of x be f of x minus f of x naught over x minus x naught. That is exactly the slope of the line that uh, connects the point x f of x with x naught f of x naught. <clears throat> the function f is differentiable at x naught if t has a limit at x naught. If this function has a limit as x approaches x naught, or a limit at x naught. In this case, we would say that f prime of x naught is equal to the limit as x goes to x naught of the function t of x. Another way of saying this is the number, this is a number, f prime of x naught, is the derivative at x naught. Um, there's one more thing I could write down here. Uh, if f is differentiable, we're still in the definition, for all x in some set E, which is a subset of the domain, we could say then f is differentiable on E. It's differentiable at every point E. E is a subset of the domain. We can say that it's differentiable on E because it's possible that it is not differentiable on the entire domain, but we may be interested in some sub part of the domain, some subset of the domain where it is differentiable. <clears throat> now, that's the definition. Um, 
There is an alternative definition. I'm just going to write down alternatively. I'll make this one short. You can say that f prime of x0 is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of what we call the difference quotient of f. Now I need to put, I shouldn't even write this unless that limit exists. So let me put in brackets, if the limit exists. So another way of saying that, the hypothesis needs to be the same. F is from D into R. X naught has to be an accumulation point of D and contained in D. Um, and we, and in that case, F prime of X is equal to this if the limit exists. 